Hello, everybody. This is Bengt Viberg from Sweden, and it's about to snow today, they say. It's rather cold here up in Sweden. Um, thank you very much for, uh, for um, inviting me to this session. We are going to talk about snooze, nicotine pouches, what is the difference, we're going to talk about flavors in uh, greatly harm reduced products such as e cigarettes, heat not burn, snooze, nicotine pouches. And I'm going to sp explain the Swedish experience of snooze. Should I speak louder? Uh, can you hear me better now? Um, fixing the technicalities. Can somebody put in the text box uh, if you can hear me well now? Ah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So, who am I? I am an MBA, an economist from Linköping University, who uh, some years ago resigned from my post to become uh, an inventor. I'm also the uh, A founder of the EU for Snooze movement. We have members from uh, more than 100 nations, all adult men and women uh, nicotine users. And uh, we did a survey with uh, hundreds of replies on the EU for Snooze Facebook group. And as it turned out, um, more than 80% of us are former smokers who has quit smoking for good with snooze. Or, <laughs> wow, nicotine pouches. I will explain the difference uh, in a moment. So the EU for snooze movement, we are... Uh, a uh, international crowd consumer movement. Uh, there's no employees and, and I'm not the director as somebody mentioned here in the introduction. I'm, I'm one of the founders of EU for Snoops and we are on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram and LinkedIn. I might have forgotten uh, somebody. So uh, we want to see an end to the European Union snooze ban. Uh, and we, we would like to see snooze becoming more well known in the rest of the world. Today, uh, we have about uh, more than 10% of the adult population in Sweden. I think it's actually around 17% of all persons who are allowed to vote in Sweden are using snooze. And what has happened in Sweden is that we more or less quit smoking, and I will show this in a moment. But first of all, let's take a one minute video and present some of my moderators in the EU for snooze. Just hang on there, see if I can do this. Here we go. Turn up the volume because on Fender Stratocaster drums and bass and vocals is Jimmy D from Germany and the lyrics I wrote them myself. Thank you. 
Here we go again. Stop screen. Oh, can you hear me? Did you like the music? Come on. Put something up on the notes beside you. So, what is Swedish news? Well, it started about 250 years ago. Uh, and the first snooze was loose snooze. I don't don't know if you can see. Now I spilled some snooze on my keyboard, but it's loose snooze. You grab between your fingers and you press uh, a little ball that you place on your upper lip. Then in, nine, in uh, about 50 years ago, the, the first uh, portion snooze came out. It looks like a little tea bag that you place under your upper or lower lip. It doesn't matter really because it's totally spit free and it gives you uh, the nicotine that you need. And like I said, EU for snooze members, more than 80% of us have quit smoking for good by help of snooze. So what are the ingredients is in, in, in snooze? It's grained tobacco, which is air cured and that is pasteurized uh, in difference to the US moist snuff, which is normally fire cured. And the pasteurization kills bacteria. And besides grain tobacco, there's a high water content. Some used to say it's the most expensive water on the planet because we have a snooze tax in Sweden, which is quite high. It's about $60 per kilo. And the water content is normally around 40, 45%. Then we have salt, uh, sometimes flavors. Snooze comes in many flavors. PO, pH adjusters, and, and that is about that. Uh, snooze was invented, like I said, 250 years ago in Sweden. And in the 1800s, it emigrated to America. So, um, nicotine pouches. Uh, there, there's a lot of brands of nicotine pouches but they more or less look like this. Still the same tea bag. You can put it on your, under your under lip or upper lip. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop in, a, I know I already have a snooze, but why not put in one more? So it is used uh, in, in the exact same way as snooze, but the content in the pouch uh, has no tobacco leaf uh, whatsoever. Uh, the filler, uh, let's say everything else is the same. We have water in nicotine pouches, we have salt, we have flavors, we have pH adjusters, but the filler is plant fibers from the plant kingdom. Uh, instead of tobacco leaf. Um, yeah, I, I, let me say, I will save the last 15 minutes for uh, any questions that you might have, which I would be very happy to, to answer. So um, we are here today 
because there is a World Health Organization conferences of the parties going on this week. It's completely secret. There is no journalists invited. There is no nicotine consumers organizations invited. And I know for a fact that just at this moment, uh, INCO, the International Network on Nicotine Consumers Organization, is staging a, a rally or a peaceful demonstration outside the Bloomberg office in London. Good, look, good luck to all, all of you in INCO. Then we have the European uh, Tobacco Harm Reduction Advocates who are also a um, very active uh, organization and EU Force News is a member of both these uh, umbrella consumer organizations and we, are, we have no funding uh, whatsoever. But let's say people talk about vaping is obviously much bigger than snooze and nicotine pouches. Uh, right now, uh, but what joins us? Several things. We all enjoy nicotine in a safer form and say most of us are former smokers who have switched to much lower, um, less harmful uh, products. So I'm going to show you a little video. Uh, thank you by the way, Professor Mareva Glover who just spoke before before me and I have a little video here about flavors in E6, heat not burn, snooze, nicotine pouches featuring Professor Mareva Glover. So let's try to show that. It's a two and a half minute video. Share screen. Bear with me. I'm an old guy. I'm 64 years old. Uh, let's see. Flavors in snooze. Here we go. Hope you can see. A very immediate question that involves actually the whole world. And, and, uh, that is flavors. How can availability of different choices of flavors in E6 and Zeus, for example, contribute to more people managing to smoke? Yeah. So one, one of the issues is that smoking tobacco, that has been the most sort of dependency forming way of using nicotine. Uh, when people switch to uh, vaping, uh, and heat not burn, and heat not burn is a good example because it is weaker. It's weaker, and I've just been to Japan, and for people switching over from smoking, some people find it's the heat not burn is not as good. So one of the users said to us that what he did, he switched to a mint flavored heat stick. He didn't use to smoke menthol. He switched to mint. And that helped and kind of compensated a bit for the weakness right. of the new product. So it's the flavor adds another uh, aspect to the more aspects you have, the opening the packet, you know, the the hand to mouth movements, mm. the sensory aspects, and, and uh, the flavor. It adds and your scent, uh, yes. Yes, the smell and the, the taste. It adds to the experience. And if something has less experience, less reward, and is weaker than yeah. smoking tobacco, it's important to help people switching over that. The flavor is incredibly important. I'm totally against banning the flavors. Right. In tobacco, uh, in, in this heat, heat not burns, snus, or vaping, that would be another thing 
that would undermine the success of people switching over. And the, the success rate would most definitely be affected, I guess. Yeah. And uh, if we only, we are modern people, and we are normally uh, used to having a variety of everything. <laughs>
includes snooze. And then uh, the conclusion is through rigorous enforcement, including stricter rules on novel nicotine products like nicotine pouches, like uh, heat not burn, like e-cigarettes. And then all of a sudden from smoking, which is the biggest cause of all cancers and tobacco mortality to tobacco, which includes snooze, nicotine pouches, and anything has to do with nicotine. And the European Beating Cancer Plan also says we will use the re remarkable potential of new technologies and scientific progress to reduce cancers in EU. And what do we have here? Here is a scientific study that came in 2020 by Merkit, etc. You have the reference below. And this is uh, the relative risk hierarchy of 13 nicotine products. To the far left, you have combustible cigarettes. And what do we have here? We have, uh, if you look to the far right, right, you have snooze, you have electronic cigarettes, you have non-tobacco pouches, you have nicotine replacement theory, uh, therapy, which is nicotine gums, nicotine patches, nicotine lozenges, and all kinds of fruity flavors. And then you have 0% risk, and that is non-use whatsoever. And as you can see, uh, in this study, they place, for example, uh, nicotine pouches at 0.22% the risk of smoking cigarettes. I highlighted these new innovations, which greatly reduce risk. There's lots of big data in regards to the relative risk of snooze. In 2017, uh, The Lancet published the Global Burden of Disease Study, which is the biggest metadata study that has ever uh, been performed and what they have done basically is to collect all scientific publications for the past 26 years and the conclusion is that Swedish type of snooze as well as snuff, um, nasal snuff, had no higher relative risk than 1.0 for any health outcome. I know that uh, not to all of you perhaps know uh, what is the meaning of relative risk. But a Swedish professor, Stefan Willers, published uh, this quote in the Swedish Medical Journal in October 2018. A recent large epidemiological study could not demonstrate any increased risk of disease with Swedish snooze. Snooze is something you put under your lip. Upper or lower lip doesn't matter. So shouldn't there be a higher risk for oral cancer when using Swedish snooze? No. The Karolinska Institute. In Sweden we do have databases which are extremely large and covering some 30 years of uh, data collection. And in May 2020, the Karolinska Institute, they are the organization that every year um, awards who gets the Nobel Prize in medicine. And the conclusion was that compared to never snooze use, ever snooze user was not associated with oral cancer. And this is a pretty... Uh, pretty large cohort, I mean, number of people, 418,000 male participants, corresponding to 9.2 million person years. And what is not explained in this slide is that 
when consuming uh, four cans of snooze, each can holds 20 pouches uh, or less per week. The scientific conclusion was that you have 35% lower relative risk of getting oral cancer than persons not using snooze at all. So the data is quite convincing. So my conclusion to this uh, European beating cancer plan is that they, they refuse to, to uh, acknowledge the great disparity in risk between combustible and non-combustible nicotine products. And uh, why invent the wheel? We have 50 years of science on Swedish news. And we have the, the Swedish experience and now also the Norwegian experience uh, as well as the Icelandic uh, experience of snooze with record low uh, smoking caused cancers and mortality. So we leave this slide just a moment, bear with me. I'll be right back to you. Uh, stop screen. Here we go again. Um, I hope uh, you found that uh, interesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about the European Union. In 1992, the European Union banned Swedish news. Uh, what is still allowed in the European Union is uh, chew bags. They look exactly like snooze, but they contain uh, cut snooze tobacco instead of grained snooze tobacco. You're supposed to chew them in your mouth. So we have uh, chew bags from North Africa, from Asia, some with very dangerous content. Uh, those are allowed in the European, but snooze is not. I was invited by the New Nicotine Alliance of UK to participate in the snooze trial hearing in Luxembourg in January 2018. So I was able, together with loads of uh, visitors, to hear the European Union argument against snooze. One European Union lawyer said that snooze had nothing to do at all with uh, the fact that Swedish men in particular had stopped smoking. It had to do with Swedish men's healthy living style. Uh, I don't think so. Another EU lawyer said it has to do with Swedish men's paternity leave. Sweden has such generous rules on paternity leave that uh, that is the, the, <laughs> the fact why Swedish men has stopped smoking. And this is, of course, totally rubbish. There is no such studies. And besides, uh, according to the latest statistics, 70% uh, of the paternity leave is taken out by Swedish women. And it's, you can spread it over 12 years. So we want to see an end and from EU and for the 100 million daily smokers in the European Union. Uh, could have so much um, use of the Swedish experience of snooze. I would like to mention also ETHRA, European Tobacco Harm Reduction Advocates. Uh, we made a, they made a, a, a big survey, probably the biggest survey on nicotine users um, in the world. Some 35,000 nicotine users answer this big survey and if i remember correctly i think about 60 over 60 percent of those who are using cigarettes for their nicotine of those 61 percent 31 percent would 
be willing to try snooze or nicotine pouches in order to help them quit smoking if it was available. Now, 31% of 100 million, uh, sorry, bad with the mathematics right now, but it comes to some 10, 12 million daily smokers in the European Union who are would be willing to try snooze if it was available. So this is a big shame. And therefore, I'm going to show you a video featuring Konstantinos Farsalinos, Brad Rodo, Gary Stimson, Ricardo Polosa, and Mareva Glover, and some other persons. This video is about eight minutes long, and I hope you enjoy it. Hang on. Chrome link. Hi everyone, I'm holding in my hand a uh, packlet collet of snus. Uh, this represents one of the biggest public health scandals that we have seen in the European Union, which was further uh, I mean, ascertained through the latest European Court decision, uh, which claimed that the reduction in smoking rates in Swedish men was caused by the paternity leave <laughs> law that was implemented a few years ago. Snus has been life-saving in Scandinavia. It has almost eliminated smoking rates <clears throat> and it has resulted in the lowest death rates from cardiovascular lung disease and lung cancer in Sweden compared to any other country in the European Union and including oral cancers because we have to also say that j just because snus is an oral product. It can be a life-saving product in several countries including for example India where rates of oral cancer are higher than the rates of lung cancer because of the use of very harmful oral um, um, tobacco products. Snooze should be available in every country where tobacco cigarettes are sold legally with the signature of the state in terms of the excise tax because every smoker has the right to access a less harmful alternative to smoke. And that's a human right. That's not a consumer right. That's a human right. We're not talking about consumer choice. We're not talking about consumer freedom. We're talking about a human right to have access to a product that will improve health. Thank you, That's Dr. Konstantinos Farsalinos. Thank you very much. Of Greece. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm a professor at the University of Louisville in the States, and I hope that the Swedish experience can be extended to the rest of the European Union. Thank you very much, Dr. Professor Rudu. <laughs> Stand up for EU for SNUS. The ban on SNUS in the EU is scandalous. Uh, many of you will know we tried to challenge that legally and it was thrown back by the European Court of Justice. But we really do have to overturn the ban on SNUS. The UK is still just in the European Union, so I'm very pleased to be able to say that I'm standing up for EU for SNUS. If the, EU, if the UK leaves, we will fight the battle in the UK independently. Go UK! Um, could you tell the, uh, the viewers uh, who you are and your background? I'm Jerry Stimson. I don't use SNUS, I don't vape, but I'm very supportive of people who want to use SNUS or want to vape in order to switch from smoking. And SNUS, I think, is going to be the magic bullet. Uh, in, across Europe, we've got a lot of people who are using e-cigarettes, but they don't work for everybody. So SNUS has to be added into the mix to help people switch away from smoking. Thank you very much, Professor Gary Stimson. Hello, I'm Mary Woodlover. I'm from New Zealand. 
and I'm the director of the Centre of Research Excellence. And my focus is on Indigenous sovereignty and smoking. Um, I've been lobbying actually in New Zealand for a very long time for our smokers there to have access to SNUS. And the government is, is still claiming that SNUS is illegal, but in actual fact, the law is not that clear. So New Zealand uh, is about to put out draft legislation, and I believe that there is a threat that they may make it very clear they're going to make SNUS illegal. So we need help in New Zealand, uh, people to support us in lobbying government to make this available or at least let New Zealand smokers also have access to snus, and also the tax needs to be changed because they're taxing it at the same rate as cigarettes, which in New Zealand is very, very high. Um, Where would you place the risk of, uh, you heard Brad Rodo yeah. just now. So I'd like to see taxation on tobacco products and nicotine products according to relative risk and Swedish snus well, if we're going to have no tax on vaping, which is the current uh, suggestion, then I think there should be no tax on Swedish snus because it's as or more uh, reduced risk than even vaping is. Thank you very much, Thank Professor. You. Thank you. I'm Professor Ricardo Colosa, the director of the Center of Excellence for the Acceleration of Hand Reduction. Uh, today, I would like to give my opinion about SNUS. SNUS is a, a nicotine-free product uh, which contains nicotine. It's been largely used in Scandinavian countries with phenomenal results in terms of public health. In fact, Swedish users have half of the prevalence of cardiovascular disease and lung cancer compared to their um, citizens in Europe. Snus can make a big difference in terms of public health and it can be a part of um, assorted tobacco arm reduction tool armamentarium, even in Italy, if we can make it with the pizza paste. <laughs> okay. um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Harry Shapiro, um, and I wear three hats. Uh, I'm involved in tobacco harm reduction as the author of the Global State Tobacco Harm Reduction Report, uh, gsthr.org, if you want to go and have a look at it. Um, I also work in the drugs field in the UK. Uh, and my third hat is to be the author of various rock books, including Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, and Tom Cruise. Uh, I'm also here to tell you very briefly about SNUS, which interestingly is tobacco harm reduction in action for about the last 200 years with a huge evidence base. Um, and I think SNUS actually gets a bit ignored. All the talk seems to be of e-cigarettes and, and heat not burn. Um, but let's not forget about SNUS as a very effective alternative to smoking cigarettes. Thank you very much. All listeners, I'm sure an argument. This is SNUS. It's an oral smokeless tobacco product. It's also available in no Oh, I'm back again. Let's see here. We close that one and uh, here I am. <laughs> uh, there's another fact about SNUS that uh, actually Professor Brad Rodo of the uh, University of Louisville in the United States uh, was telling us. Uh, uh, and the fact is that Sweden is probably the only country on the earth, on the planet where mm -hmm. Male smoking is less frequent than female smoking. And uh, Brad Rodo told me that the only really great thing that, that uh, Swedish men can teach Swedish women is their habit of uh, what products they use for their nicotine. In all other countries, I think like in China, there's a smoking prevalence of 50% among men and only 2-3% among Chinese women. Um, I'm going to show uh, 
my last video. It's about five minutes long and it shows how outrageous these anti all nicotine tobacco crusaders are willing to go. Here, me and Atakan Befritz of the New Nicotine Alliance Sweden visits a uh, doctor thesis presentation at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. And one of the professors actually suggested that it's too bad that you cannot mark scientists who believe in tobacco harm reduction with a red star. Hear it out. Hi, friends of snooze uh, and e-cigarettes and tobacco harm reduction. I'm Bengt Wieberg, representing EU for snooze. And I'm Atakan Befritz, representing INCO and NNA Sweden. We just came out from a very interesting seminar where a doctor presented his thesis on... Uh, vascular effects of snooze and electronic cigarettes at the Dandridge Sjukhus Hospital in Stockholm under the auspices of the Karolinska Institute. The most amazing uh, part of this show, which you will see later on on a video, is that uh, the conclusions drawn on this uh, study on vascular is that, uh, I'm quoting now the doctor, e-cigarettes and snooze should therefore not be considered as harmless, harmless recreational products. Which means, to the best of our understanding, that as that is a clear-cut premise of the whole discussion part of his thesis on his five papers, is that we are saying it is a harmless product. You are saying it is a harmless product. Industry is saying it is a harmless product. And scientists who agree with us are saying it is a harmless form of nicotine use. To the best of my knowledge, none of the people I have met over my 12 years in tobacco harm reduction advocacy have ever used the word harmless. It's not harmless, it's vastly harm reduced. Yeah. Uh, Royal College of Physicians in London concluded that e-cigarettes and snooze are probably more than 95% less harmful than smoking cigarettes. Snooze, on the other hand, given the epidemiology that we do have in Sweden over 120 years of over 10% adult male lifelong exclusive issues is that snooze will fall somewhere in the 98 to 99.9% .9 harm reduced category. So uh, more reports will come from this uh, three hour uh, seminar and discussion. And uh, by the way, who said something about branding people with a red star? Oh yes, uh, Dunila Bulinder, in one of her questions uh, that was very heavily regarding um, conflicts of interest and machinations from industry and so forth and so on, actually said to the audience in the room that it's too bad that they cannot mark us with a red star. And those of us with a little bit of knowledge of history hear and see very disgusting parallels in hearing a prominent scientist use that kind of language. That is completely unacceptable. Yeah, there was the yellow stars. Could have been that. For example. One thing we did ask was that in the, um, in the discussion part of the thesis, there is also quoted that the majority of e-cig is sold and made by the tobacco industry. We ask that is not consistent with the data we have or Wells Fargo or anybody else who is very good at those things because it's less than 20%. And uh, the doctor who wrote the thesis, he was also asked by uh, someone in the um, panel group, 
was Hans Gilliam of uh, Tobacco Factor. So, yes, Tobacco Factor and Emeritus yeah. Tobacco Control Professor. He, he asked, who is, who should be responsible if you introduce a, a new consumer product like this one, e-cigarettes? Who, in your opinion, would be responsible to show the evidence that this is a safe product for, say, 20 or 30 years, as we have seen uh, tobacco smoking, as an example. Anyways, here's Atacamba Fitz, Bengt Wieberg, outside the Dandreed Hospital, and we hope you support hashtag EU for snooze and liberty for all men and women. 1.2 billion people are smoking today at the cost for the World Society of 2 trillion US dollars and 6 million dead annually. And we are reporting from the bike shed. Yes. You have also in your author, in your reference list, um, quite some, a lot of people that have interests of conflicts with the tobacco industry. And that's very hard because you cannot mark them with a red star or something like that. But there are, they do exist that in it. And they are working hard now on uh, the harm reduction model. Yes. We just touched on that. But this is a huge problem because we, are, we should, as scientists, be more interested in the comparison between non-users of a drug and user of the drug, not the ones who have the worst side of exposure, but you must always with, uh, compare with the non-users. I completely agree. <laughs> so, uh, oh, let me get back to you. I hope we have some listeners and viewers. Um, Oh, I didn't show it as full screen. Uh, very sorry for that. I hope you were able to 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 see it uh, anyway. So we talked about snooze. We talked about nicotine pouches. We have talked about e-cigarettes, heat not burn. We have talked about the importance of flavors in all of these products in order to attract more smokers to switch to lower risk products uh, and all this this talk about about uh, um, banning flavors and only allowing tobacco flavors i mean <laughs> in e-cigarettes and, and uh, nicotine pouches they, there is no tobacco what is a tobacco flavor and uh, would you, for example, uh, what if you banned all the flavors in, in alcohol? Uh, who would drink? Uh, they would all taste like water. Is that a good idea? Nicotine, according to the science, is not the cause of any cancers. Nicotine is uh, something for adults and in particular to to help smokers uh, go down the risk continuum and reduce their risk i enjoy nicotine i'm i'm a former smoker i smoked for many years and i completely switched away from smoking thanks to snooze nicotine pouches and when i have a even bigger nicotine need, I, I, I have a vaping device as well. Perhaps Saturdays enjoying a beer, a snooze and uh, some vape. Um, what else can we, what have I forgotten? Um, yeah, why not bring up uh, FDA tobacco? In 2017, I was invited to uh, the Global Tobacco and Nicotine Forum in New York. Um, besides receiving a, an award uh, for most exciting newcomer to the, to the industry, 
for uh, my innovation of a completely different pouch. Uh, I also managed to, I also were able to, to um, interview director Mitch Seller, the director of FDA Tobacco. And I asked him, what is, um, what is your opinion about the Swedish experience of snooze and how this has helped Sweden have the lowest uh, cancer rates of lung cancer and cardiovascular diseases in, in, uh, in Europe? And Mitch Seller replied there, uh, somebody, some people said it was the first time in history that FDA actually acknowledged something being less harmful uh, than cigarettes. And he said, ah, FDA absolutely understands the Swedish experience of snooze because of the epidemiology. We have a whole nation with epidemiological data supporting that snooze is less harmful. And just a couple of years ago, uh, eight brands of snooze were approved as the first ever in history, in FDA history, modified risk tobacco products. And since then, uh, ICOS, the heat not burn device, has also received this and also several um, uh, e-cigarette brands. So now, I would say FDA has shown the way while the European Union and anti-all crusaders, uh, tobacco control crusaders are still resisting. Um, United Kingdom has now made Brexit and we're very hopeful that that uh, they will review the science on on snooze and also allow it in the United Kingdom as yet another formidable um, product of lower risk nicotine besides uh, vaping in England. Uh, nicotine pouches uh, are allowed in the United Kingdom, but not snooze containing uh, tobacco, unfortunately. So UK government officials, if you are listening, please consider snooze and look at the Swedish experience and the Norwegian experience on how the Nordic Viking countries have almost quit smoking totally. Let's see if I can find any questions. Hmm, I wonder if I have to go into YouTube to see those. Um, I forgot to show one video. It's a video that has been view viewed uh, 16,000 times on YouTube. It's very short, it's three minutes. And the video is called, How Dangerous is Snooze Compared to Smoking? Hope you enjoy it. Uh, share, share. Stop screen. Oh, what did I do? Share, share screen, Chrome link. For those who doesn't know, how dangerous is snooze compared to smoking, would you say, in your scientific opinion? There is a very, very important difference in health risks. The most modern uh, medical research has actually ended up by saying that snooze does not cause oral cancer. 
it does not cause cardiovascular disease. The cardiovascular risks are, are close to negligible in the case of SNPs. And speaking of lung cancer, it's quite obvious that there is no risk at all since SNPs doesn't reach the lungs. And the same thing for uh, the airways uh, and the neck. And that means that uh, the uh, chronic obstructive lung disease, which is one of the major uh, smoking related uh, causes of death, uh, has a zero risk for SNPs. If we, I, I draw uh, uh, behind you, there is a scale from 0% to 100% risk for life and serious health problems. Uh, where would you put uh, snooze on, 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 on this scale, in, in your opinion? Somewhere here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I think it's important to notice that uh, the estimated risk point is so much closer to the zero end <coughs> than to the 100% end. There are so many uh, sources of so-called facts that say, okay, uh, SNUS risk is smaller than the risk of smoking, mm. but there is still a risk. But that kind of wording sounds like that uh, cutoff point being located quite close to the 100% end of the scale. Yes. So I think it's important to notice the uh, exact location of that point. Screen. Oh, stop. Oh, what I do? I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, my time is almost up. It's uh, three minutes to 12 o'clock Swedish time. I thank you for viewing and listening. And be safe out there. There are safer nicotine alternatives. And don't be ashamed if you are a user of nicotine. Uh, just try to use the lower risk ones. Thank you very much. And over and out from Bengt Viberg, EU for Snooze. Oh, comments from YouTube. We still have two minutes. Uh, Hope. Sorry for any technical mishaps. Let's see if I can find an. Uh... Now that's it for me. It's one minute to twelve. And my time is up, and 